Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee and welcome to Skill Builder Live. This is the first in a series of videos where we go to power tool manufacturers and look at their latest offerings. And to help us with this, we've got Martin Sibley, who is, what do you do, Martin? Good question. Yes, I'm Martin Sibley. I'm the responsible product manager for all the cordless power tools for Bosch here in the UK and Ireland. Ah, the cordless ones. Cordless, ah, yes. I didn't quite catch that. So all these ones with the cord on, you know nothing about, is that right? <laughs> uh, a little bit about them as I used to cover that category as well, but nearly all innovation nowadays in the market is cordless. The yeah. future is cordless. And why is that? Just the freedom uh, and also the power and batteries and the optimised machines you can get now. You can get corded performance from cordless power tools but now. It, uh, but it, what is actually driving the cordless? Is it the manufacturers thinking, oh, we can make more money out of it or um, what? Not really. It's the same way as you would look at your old mobile phone, for example. It wouldn't have been mobile. It would have had a cable against it. Yeah. Um, everyone now, not us today because we're filming, but has mobile phones. And it's just the freedom. You don't want to go up and down ladders on building sites, working on the job and trailing cables around with you. Okay, so we've also got with us today on Skype, Peter Brett. Now, Peter Brett, hello, Peter, can you hear us? Hi, Roger, yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Now, Peter Brett is coming from somewhere on the planet. He moves about and he doesn't always tell us where he is, hence he's on Skype, but he has to move about for tax reasons. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're giving away my secrets. <laughs> so there he is. He's going to he's going to contribute to the program now. Peter works for Tall Business and Hire. He's been working for different publications throughout his career. He's had a bit of an interesting life. Maybe we we'll get around to talking about that later. But um, you, you're working reviewing tools mainly for the hire industry. Is that right at the moment? Well, largely, yeah, largely power tools. And it, but the thing is, it, it covers everything from sort of lifting equipment to small plants to sort of mowers to the latest cordless power tools. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's everything. And your background, your kind of expertise, if you like, is, is in the wood um, working. Yeah, essentially, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's the bit I know most about. Yeah, so, that's, that's yeah. where I first came across you, languishing in a pile of sawdust, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, and thank goodness you rescued me, Roger. Thank goodness. <laughs> I tell you what, you're never far away from a project. You've been out working this morning, I hear. That's right. Yeah, I, I, I left. I left the wood hardener hardening uh, uh, before I have to go back and, and, and set the sill. What a two pack? I, You've been using the uh, two pack. No, no, it's huh? just. It, it, oh, I know the stuff you pour on when the, the wood's a bit mushy, and you pour it on, and it hardens it up. It was just a small section of the corner, and I didn't really want to bring take any more out, so. Yeah, just harden that bit up, and then and then it'll be mostly hidden behind a new sill anyway. So, so what is it? Wet rot. Uh, yeah, wet rot. Yeah, yeah and, and are you stuff. selling the house? No, You're not <laughs> it's selling the house. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, that's when people do that kind of job, isn't it? Hide back. So what? So what tools have you been using today then? Um, I've been using uh, my 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 Multimaster, my fine Multimaster. Oh, um, okay. Both the cordless and uh, and the corded one. Um, uh, with with the new Starlock, actually. Ah, well, that's coming up later, so maybe you'll have something to say about that. So you chip in whenever you like. Whenever you think we're getting a bit boring, you chip in and uh, liven us up a bit, right. yeah? Okay. All right, that's Peter. Great. So hopefully the Skype stays with us wherever he is in the world. He will tell us later on, I'm sure. But uh, anyway, that's Peter. This is Martin. This is me. And we're going to look at the first tool. Quite right. We're going to look at new charging technology and new battery technology. Right, so I know these are batteries. Quite right. These are N eraser batteries. Now, N eraser. N eraser. N eraser, which is the clever marketing term for the combination of energy and racer. How does that translate into German? Not very well, to be honest, Roger, not very well. But luckily for the English speaking community, N eraser. What can I tell you about batteries which you Well don't let me tell know. you let me tell you something about batteries yes. to begin with, just as a little test here. This is Bosch Cool Pack. Quite right, yeah? yes. I recognise the Cool Pack. It's very distinctive. You can't mistake it for any other battery. And the idea of this is that you've put a gap between the cells to allow air to travel through because you want to keep it cool, yeah? Quite right. In, you're, you're exactly right there. In the charging process, when heat builds up in, in the battery, and heat, as you all know, is the killer of batteries, the Cool Pack system here, and funny enough, I've actually got a cutaway which will show you even better. There we go, an ideal one to see there. You can see that actually air can flow around the cells and actually allows it on the plastic to dissipate the heat out, which is interesting because actually I brought a very, very old version along. 
to show you as well. Yeah. Can you hold that up for me, Roger? Yeah. Can you see that? Right. Now, okay. look, I'll tell you what I'll also do, Peter, while you're away. I don't know how far away you are, but I'm going to blow through these air. <sighs> Could you feel All that? All right. Yeah, no, I felt that. Yeah, yeah no, well, that's I'll what happened before you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, that's, that's the, the clear view straight through the battery through each cell. So, so basically what you do there is you eliminate conduction, don't Quite you? Quite right. If you look yeah. at an older version here, where they're actually just jammed together, almost touching in, in, yeah. in cases, that makes more heat. It doesn't allow it to dissipate out of the battery. And as I said earlier, heat is the killer of batteries. And, and this is actually what most cordless power tools Quite have got, right, isn't yeah. it? They, they, they haven't got that? No. We're unique with cool pack technology. You, you need to control lithium. These lithium cells, you need to control them. And that is not only in the physical sense in heat, but actually electronically. You need to control what's happening with each of the cells. Yeah, I remember in the early days, there used to be stories of them bursting into flames on laptops and things, don't they? People using their laptop and then the, the lithium ion battery would, would overheat and start certainly, singeing their trousers. Yeah. There's certainly stories of that, and it is all down to control of the actual cells and the technology, the chemistry inside it. So firstly, lithium is a massive stage and jump beyond what we had previously. So previously we had NICAD, nickel metal hydride, much bigger, longer lasting, memory effect. They were the first stage, but now lithium is really, yeah. really the modern way of working. Particularly, as I say, go back to your mobile phone, the one you hold today runs longer, lasts longer, does far more things, and you have a phone which is optimised to use that lithium technology. So, that's lithium. Martin, can yes. you just, uh, what's the difference in years between the old uh, version and the new version? How many years between each? Um, but between the two of them? Good question, actually, Peter. Um, the first lithium batteries from Bosch were around in the late 80s into the 90s, and the speed at which innovation has happened. So, for example, if I look at a brand new N Eraser, just to be launched, and compare yeah. it to a six amp, you're probably looking at two years. Two right. years in difference between the technology yeah. jumps. So every couple of years, there'll be a new technology jump. And that actually, and, and, and thank you for the question, has taken me on to another point. What we've done here with Bosch, you'd be future-proofed people who've bought into Bosch systems. There's yeah. nothing worse than buying into a system, a new battery comes out, and suddenly you may have experienced yeah, yourself. Yeah, I hate it, that. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't fit with the system yeah. you already have. So yeah, suddenly yeah. you can't have the new technology because it doesn't fit. We at Bosch have made sure that this pattern here has been the same since the first lithium battery we produced in professional tools. So this battery today will fit the first drill we ever produced in professional tools. Really? If it's lithium, it will slot in. So they're all exactly the same, giving us complete forward and backward compatibility, which is a major thing to do. And you reckon that, that actually by keeping the heat out of these batteries, you're getting a longer, not only longer sort of run time, if you like, better performance, but they last longer. Definitely, definitely. The lifetime, they last longer, everything about them. So if, if I talk you through very quickly what we have at the moment, so we have the new N Eraser, which I'm going to show you in a second. Here we go. This is our current six amp. So something just to talk about here is to get back to the basics of power in batteries. And we use something called watt hours, which is the combination of the amp hour, oh. six, that's the fuel in the tank, yeah, yeah. and the voltage, 18. All oh, right, so, so there's a new measurement out there. I was looking at amp hours and voltage, now they, they combine they those two. Right, right. So how many watt hours in? Do the that math. would be 108 off the top of my head. All right, all right. <laughs> times just six. a multi <laughs> multiplication. There you are. Maths was never my strong point, I've got to say that. That's why I ended up as a builder. <laughs> so let's talk about the difference. So a battery like this has a built-in system, as we said earlier, and Roger mentioned about machines catching fire, laptops, phones, things like that, uh, and, and not working for a long period of time. It's because as you draw power out of the battery, the current coming out of the battery, if you don't have any sort of electronic system to stop, what will happen is if you keep drawing power out of this battery, the amperage goes up and up and up, and around about 40 amps, this battery will cut itself out. All right, to save it to save it and also save the tool it's working with. So you get a far longer life of your battery because you're not abusing it. You're not going over those 40 amps. So the difference, if I show you an eraser, is very similar in size. You can see here, they're very, very similar in size. Yeah. Weight. Mm, slightly heavier. Fractionally. Slightly, not, not, fractionally a lot, not a lot. Not a lot in it, yeah. So what we've done here, we've used bigger cells inside this actual battery. As you saw earlier, we have, these are the generation 
at the moment we're using. We're now moved to a 2700, a technical term, but yep. what it basically means is a bigger cell being able to hold more power. We've moved across to that and we've also changed the way the battery's put together. Okay. So previously these would be spot welded, the battery cells yep. that we saw earlier, just spot welded in place. With the new Enerator, there's a new technology come out, which Bosch are using, which laser welds them. Oh, okay, so that, that takes away the heat. So that, exactly. so, so what you're saying is that spot weld, basically, every time you spot weld a battery, you, you introduce a bit of heat, which is not, as you said, good Quite for the right. battery. That damages the chemical c component underneath, the actual chemicals of it, so you don't get as much life or use, usable life out of the battery. So by using the new laser welding technology, which is much quicker, much more accurate, and doesn't damage the inside. So, Firstly, that gives you, so you're actually going to be able to use all of what's inside the cell. Yeah, and also, I guess, better contact, because if you don't get great contact, mm. you get resistance, and Quite therefore right. you get heat. So the more contact you can have on that cell, exactly right. with the strap across there, the better. The better now, yeah. are these, uh, I know this is a, getting off subject slightly, but are these monitored, these cells, to, to stop them heating up individually or what? How does that work? Exactly right. So um, on the top of the battery, this is one of our current batteries, there's a full system on top and a PCB up in the tool itself, and as you rightly say, which monitors the condition of those cells yeah. to make sure if any of those cells are having too much power drawn out of them, having too much temperature being caused, they will actually cut themselves out to protect, as we said, right, the yeah. battery and also the tool around it. Yeah. So with N eraser, the difference is that N eraser will allow you to almost double that, almost 80% higher. Really? So the Cool Pack 2.0 system is not only the red part, it also includes the two edges. Yeah. So it's a larger surface area to dissipate the heat out. Also inside it, it monitors before its electronic cell protection kicks in at 40, this will be at 80. So it allows you to run much larger tools, much much bigger applications and at much higher draws. So we're still talking 18 volt. Quite right, yeah. quite right. So, so what you're saying is what would you then put this new N eraser battery into that you couldn't put that one into? Okay. If, for example, if you went to a large compound miter saw, eight to 10 inch portable miter saw, oh, okay. where that's a big draw as you come, especially green timber, as you're cutting through, maybe it's a blunt blade, as people often don't yeah. change the yeah. blade, yeah. anything like that, it gives you it's going to draw much more power at the battery. The electronic cell protection will cut in on a standard battery, but with the N eraser, it will last far, far longer. Now, I would just mention at this point that we're going to be running a competition where you can win a new Boschless 18 volt brushless combi drill. At the end of this transmission, you can go to our website. It won't come live until the end of this transmission, but as soon as this is over, if you go to our website, details coming up on the screen now, and also at the end of the show, go straight to the Bosch page there. There'll be a competition. There'll be three questions that you've got to answer that are to do with our presentation here, and you could be the lucky winner of the new brushless combi drill, 18 volt from Bosch. Now, those questions may be something like, for example, this is double the time Quite of the right, other one. Yeah, I'm not saying right. that will be the question, but right. it's that kind of detail you need to be. So if you've got a pen and paper handy, you want to note things down or just keep it in your noggin, like I try to do. Anyway, the competition will be coming up later, yeah? Quite right, yes. Peter, yeah. what have you got to say yeah. about hiring cordless tools? Are they, are, they, yeah. are they sort of thing that um, people hire yeah. or not? Virtually non-existent in the hire industry. Um, well, largely because the, the prices have come down so much um, for, you know, standard sort of cordless tools. Um, so most 18 volt uh, tools, you, they, they wouldn't bother really. And if you if you can't hire them, you can borrow them. You know, you always have somebody who's got a mate who, or you can get the 99 pound special from, from a shed or something like that. However, with the bigger batteries, uh, you know, maybe getting up to 36 volt and, and, and this sort of stuff, and also with bigger um, applications like circular saws and that sort of thing, I think there's gonna be a much more of a take up in higher on on those um the trouble is they're going to have to meet the kind of reliability and tough toughness standards of the higher industry because basically and I, i'm sure i've told you this before you know i was chatting to a higher guy who said um there's uh, there's higher there, there's idiot proof and then there's higher proof <laughs> yeah yeah and uh True yeah enough. i think we've got to get to that sort of point yeah there's no control over it is there i mean they let those things those tools out to the guys and they can't tell what they're doing using and abusing them so i suppose from that point of view they do th need things which are absolutely bomb proof don't they yeah 
Great, so we'll, we'll be coming back to you in a sec. We'll, so that's the N Eraser battery Quite right, yes. from Bosch, and uh, that's, that's available now? Yes, it's, it's launching as we speak now. Um, and as I said earlier, the three kind of things to remember is much higher current available from the battery, so you can run much larger machines. And, and Peter's point he made earlier there, reference to higher machines, this will run the equivalent of a corded product around 1500 watt. So if you're in 1500 watt, suddenly you're into your large circular saws, yeah. your smaller breakers, um, your larger grinders as well. 100% um, longer lifetime as well with the cool pack 2.0. And finally, the most important part for me is it's future proof. Yeah. and backward compatible so it fits everything. Yeah, there's no doubt that cordless tools, I mean, when I first started, I'm old enough to remember the first cordless tools coming in, you know, the sort of seven volt drills and things like that. And you never really thought they were gonna be any more than toys, did mm. you? You know, and over the, the years, I've just watched them come on in leaps and bounds, longer run time, lighter, stronger, better, faster, whatever. And uh, you just wonder where it's gonna stop. And there are cordless tools that I think mm, that's a little bit too far because I think it's all about portability and if you've it got is. a machine like a, a, a chop saw for example mm. circular saw there sorry not circular saw chop saw or mitre saw on the bench I'm thinking why do you need batteries for that but then there are people who work away from mains power quite, so. right. quite right or if it's a site 110 volt yeah. they're able to walk in with the battery it's fully charged and use it instead and, it, and there's also obviously the trip hazard cables yes, running yeah, everywhere yeah. never a long enough plug never a four plug as well so the future's bright for you in your cordless definitely. haven and definitely if it's it not, and if it's not you'll jump ship into the corded you know me too well <laughs> <laughs> anyway so that's the first don't go away, come back soon. As I say, the competition's coming up at the end, so keep watching for those details. That's the first look at the N Eraser battery, and we've got something else coming up in just a few seconds time. Hello, welcome back to the second part of our Skill Builder live transmission from the Bosch headquarters here in deepest Denham. We've got Martin Sibley, we've been talking about the N Eraser battery if you want to watch part one, and we're now going to talk about Starlock. Yeah, quite right. Let me talk you through Starlock. Well, firstly, multi cutters. Yeah, multi cutters. So this is one of the biggest growing parts of the market that we actually see. People are starting to use multi-cutters for a rate of applications, um, which previously you'd had to have done by hand. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I've got one and I don't know what I ever did without it. We're looking at a job, we were laying some floor the other day, and I said to the guy working with me, how do we manage without these things? And, and it just seems that there are so many jobs that you can do with this tool that you just wonder how you ever got on and would have done them. They're, they're the ultimate problem solver from simple things like uh, laminate flooring, cutting off the bottom of architrave, round doors, these are absolutely perfect for it. Um, ourselves and many other uh, power tool manufacturers now have a multi-cutter within their range and their mm. portfolio. So um, what I'm gonna do is take a, a slight step back from that and talk to you about the tooling, what actually fits on the end of it. Yeah, yeah. So if I can quick, I'll show you. Let's do an example of traditional tooling. So here's a traditional, multi-cutter underneath okay. it you can see there it's got the the hex screw or alternatively the allen key I've and what does my allen key there handy. we are As never lose my allen key exactly right well i do actually yeah this is one All of the, the time i'm losing my allen key this is one of the challenges with technology like this that you have to keep putting the blade on and off yeah. the actual screw can be lost and alternatively I just mentioned 
the Allen key can be lost as well. And it's a slow process as well. To, to be fair, now, uh, uh, you know, you maybe it's going to bring you out in a cold sweat if I mention Fine, who invented this machine. Yes. Till the patent ran out and then everybody jumped in there and produced their own version of it. And on the new Fine one, it has got even though it's not the Starlock system, it's got a locking lever oh, right, on yeah. there. Yes. So there's a pin that drops in the top. It's not too bad. I mean, you still lose the pin if you're that stupid. But, um, but yeah, it's, we've come on from the Allen key in some ways. But what you're saying is you have the Allen key version and then the next one is the Starlock. Quite right. So if you see here what, what Roger has in his hands here, you can see the 12 holes there. They engage with 12 little um, nipples sticking up and then we screw in the screw to hold it in place and you can put it in different positions. Um, yeah. With the new Starlock system, we still cover those 12 holes. You can see them here on the tooling. Yeah. We still cover it, but it can be used far quicker. So with the new tools like we have here, our 18 volt, you can basically, if I twist it over for you so you can see what's happening, you basically just push it into place. Oh, okay. We're now ready to use. Right, let's have a look at that again. Yeah. What's happening here in the middle is we've got a couple of jaws. Now they're clock cocked, if you like. Yeah. Cocked open. Yeah. Now when we stick this on, so you can close up. The do lever. you need to do that? Do you need yeah. to close the lever or no. not? Well, you well, just oh, close it up. It just closes. All right. Okay. Now you wouldn't normally do this in this way, but I'm going to do it just so you can see what happens. And those jaws spring out. Quite right. Yeah. And lock it firmly in position. But of course you don't have to do it like that. You can do it just like this yeah oh <laughs> didn't work do you know what i've been doing this i've been using one of these machines for weeks and every single time i've done it this is the great thing about live transmissions is that there's no hiding place to go we've all been there what is going on here i can show you what's going on it's because the tooling isn't flat on the bench once, once the tooling's flat on the bench or you can take another one yeah yeah Ha, ha, ha. Ah, yes, go. the beauty of live filming. There we go. Now, that's what I wanted. Thank you, Peter. Thank I've you about that. the battery. I've done that 10 times just like that. Oh, do you know why? Because I was using a corded one. Ah, yeah, one that's the difference. Bit. Okay. So, we spoke. Anyway, we got over that bit. Oh, wow. Sweat is over. Thank you for the interaction from Peter. Let's look through then. So, as we spoke earlier about N Eraser, making sure the top of the battery fitted everything we'd produced before and everything we're going to produce in the future, future-proofing us. This 12-hole system is identical to what we saw earlier on. Yeah. Absolutely identical, so it means it's fully backward compatible. Okay, so I can put that onto there. Yep. Quite right, yes you can. You'll see a, a, another subtle difference, if I turn it on the side, is what we class as this 3D interface. Yeah. So basically by lifting it up you get more in the actual the jaws all on the actual machine itself compared to the so predecessor. That's just the flat stamping of a piece of Quite metal. right. Where well, this is actually being pushed through to make that 3D mould. So what does that, in practical terms, what does that do for us, that what it 3D does, interface? Actually, well, what it does is, once you move away from smaller machines as we have here into bigger, more powerful machines, yeah. you have more meat in the cutting effect. You have more meat actually holding on to the actual tooling. And due to that means you can use higher powered machines. So what we actually have is, when you move to the higher power machines, we actually lose, I think we can see it there, we lose the 12 holes, you can see yeah. here. So the star's gone out of a star lock. Yeah, quite right, right, you can see we lose the holes, and it means there's far more actually gripping onto the actual tool itself. And as such, you're able to get better power transfer. Yeah. And we can even take that. So more torque, basically. Yeah, it, yeah. it's able to hold on more. So okay. we go from our Starlock into yeah. our Starlock Plus when we go into this yeah. 3D interface. So, so, so the Starlock is backward compatible. Quite right. The Starlock Plus isn't. Quite right. Starlock Plus isn't because so it's designed for so newer is, machines. So this is not backward compatible, but it's future proof. Quite right, we're future proof. Okay. And then you can go to the Ultimate, which is, as you can see here, hopefully the camera can pick it up is what we cast the Starlock Max. You can also see the blade length is getting longer, because yeah. basically it would work on a far more powerful machine. Mm. So you mentioned earlier on, very briefly corded. Um, here we go, we've got one here. This is it, this is one I was using, yeah. There we go, whoops, there we go. Can you move those towards you a bit, Roger? Sorry? Can you move those blades a bit towards you a bit? I can, yeah. Yeah, that's it, perfect. See the overhead camera slightly, but that's all right. My cameraman will stop gesturing at me in a minute. There you are. See, look, oh. I can do it every time. I'm, I'm made for the, you see, every, uh, this one for Starlock Max. Oh, no, no it should go on. 
it's on. There we are. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. That so, should, should be good. Now, can I just say, can I interrupt or not? Or do you want me to carry on? Or do you no, want me to carry on? It's your show. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, there's a difference here, I've noticed, that yours are curved and the competition straight. So what's Quite going right. on there? Uh, that's a, a, a good question there. Let me just show you. So when these machines are used, what you find is, particularly with plunge cut, as you plunge down into workpiece vertically, you will often see people using this kind oh, of rocking yeah. action. Yeah. They're using the rocking action to actually clear what's the debris, what's actually being cut. And with a curved end of the blade, it's only a fractional curve, yeah. but it's enough that when you use that rocking technique, it allows you clearance, which gotcha. allows you a far faster cut. It also allows you to clear the swarf out so you don't have any burn in the cut as well. So, uh, well spotted. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly why we have the curved te technology on the front of our blades, particularly plunge blades. Now, I know, Peter, we were talking uh, the other day about Starlock and so on, and, and it's no secret that this was developed by Fine and by Bosch together wow. as a joint venture between the two, and they're both making a blade for it. So have you used both or what? What are you using? I've, I've used both. Um, and I have to say, just looking at those slightly longer Bosch ones, uh, you know, there have been several times in the last, literally the last couple of weeks when I kind of thought I really could have done with some longer blades. And also, particularly, you know, what Martin's just explained about the burning in the cut and the slightly rocking motion. That is, it's so critical. I mean, I actually had a client sticking her head around the, the door on me this morning when I was, you know, taking that sill off um, and, and sort of slightly sniffing the air because there was quite a lot of burning going on. Um, so anything done that where, where, you, where you can get rid of stuff from the cut, where you can make it easier, where, uh, you know, there's less burning and, and less hassle, and less heat, the better. Yeah, the heat is a key thing, isn't it? Because obviously when you're going through timber and you start making these things red hot, and they are red hot by the time you finish sometimes, especially as they get blunt, um, then that heat is doing you no good at all, well, doing at all no good at all. But that being said, I mean, I, you know, again this morning, I, I came across, uh, you know, a, a, a screw that I, a hidden screw, I didn't realise it was there. Um, and within seconds, I had managed to totally ruin a blade that cost me five, ten quid, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's quite a, you know, it's quite a heavy thing, uh, you know. And I've tried the cheaper blades. Unfortunately, the cheaper blades, yeah, they're not really up to it. Do you know what I find that they're not? They are, it, we're all tempted to because let's face it, these aren't cheap, are they? These blades are not right. cheap. And and when you look at it and you see some some you know, cheap Chinese ones, if you like, coming in and unbranded or some brand and you think okay i'll give these a go they're half the price but you get probably quarter of the the life performance out of them yeah. so so costing life they're they're more expensive i've found that i've i'd love to get away from paying this high price but it doesn't seem to be you've got us mate you've got us now what bosch are doing here is this just a cynical attempt to keep people locked into a system or not good question no <laughs> no, he, would, he would say that. No, it isn't. Um, that, that's very similar to where we mentioned SDS Plus, for example. Yeah. SDS Plus, we could say that was cynical in its way, but everyone uses SDS Plus now. Mm. And it's because we and others um, who have good market share, people are using the product, they buy into a system, they want to stay in the system. And that is why, as we mentioned earlier, just to recap, yeah. that is why we've gone with the fact that the old tool in the OIS system with the 12 holes, yeah. where there are literally tens and hundreds of thousands of these products out there, they need a system of blades they can stay with. Yeah. Otherwise, suddenly the, blade, the, the tool's de defunct because you have no blades to go with it. And yeah. you do tend, as we mentioned earlier, buy cheaper blades, maybe things which have been patented to fit it, and you don't get the performance out of them. And that's not what you want. I noticed on the market the other day that there's also an adapter yes. to get you from Starlock back to the old OIS system, yeah? Is okay. that right? Um, from the I, Starlock Plus, maybe, even. I have seen adapters, and we previously, with the OIS system, actually supplied an adapter so you could use some oh, other okay. system of tooling on the market, because there's always, it's not as if it's a battery that only fits your tool. Mm. 
the same as the Duracell or anybody like that, their batteries will fit everything and everything is designed around it. And it's really about giving the user something all the time. So yes, there are adapters available which you can use in combination with different multi-cutters to use a different array of tools. Now, there's a danger, as far as I can see here, this is just me yeah. thinking off the top of my head, but I think the danger is that when you start using these, as you say, this is putting more torque on the machine. Yes. If you put an adapter onto your yeah. own machine, you are your now old running machine, a risk of snap off. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's just snap running, off, is it? It's not. Yeah. We're not talking about it stuffing the mechanism no, inside no. at you, all. To, to actually, uh, as you coined the phrase, stuff the inside there. Um, you know, I use the technical terms <laughs> if I can. <laughs> but uh, to be honest with you, with that happening. If you were to use a machine constantly where you were overusing it, and particularly if you're using too big a tooling yeah. designed for the machine, you're trying to get a compromise and use an adapter, then there would be a, a possibility of damage to the machine yeah. itself. Yeah. But um, yet again, looking at it, feedback from people who actually have them, oh, don't say you bring out a new system. Does it fit my old one? Yeah. Yes, it does. Okay, so I just want to ask you a question now, yeah. which is of no interest probably to our viewers, but I'm an anorak and Whereabouts are these blades made? Well, these are made in the Swiss Alps at the Chantilla factory. I've been there. That's, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking that they, you make jigsaw blades yeah, there, don't you? Millions and millions of jigsaw blades pouring out of this fat, fascinating place for people like me that are interested in production and factories, but I suppose some other people might not like it. But anyway, so they, they're coming yeah. out the same. Yeah, same Swiss place. quality and way it's made um, and the same high standards. Um, they're really, really good at jigsaw yeah, blades, and that yeah. technology, even with the set, the teeth, the spacing, everything has been transferred across. Yeah. Onto I don't want to. I don't want to big up Bosch and Julie, but <laughs> at, at their accessories—they're doing some right things because I know everybody swears by those those drill bits of yours yes. as well that go through everything. The so construction. Yeah, bits, that's yeah, the ones. Right. Yeah, so it's fantastic. I mean, people use those even if they, they even if they don't buy any other Bosch product, they buy those drill bits. We do very so, well on them. Yes. Yeah. I, I would buy. Uh, sorry, Martin. I would buy the the, the Bosch uh, metal cutting uh, Starlock blades because they are just totally the best. They they're the ones that work the best. So they're the ones that go, go through the screws and you don't even screws, know you've gone through the screws. Think, yeah, yeah. yeah. For flush cutting. Yeah. Perfect. Whereas whereas with some of them. So so sorry you, so for for flush cutting. What is that? What do you well, mean by that? What I mean by flush cutting is if you imagine, for example, a screw, let's say, sticking out of a, a piece of wood. Yeah. Um, the usual way of cutting it, junior hacksaw, coming across it, and you'd always end up with some of it sticking up, it. which can be catch. If you're trying to butt up pieces of timber together, you can't do it. Yeah. The old fashioned way, get a big lump hammer, smash it down, try and flatten it in. But with flush cutting, the actual blade, as you can see, they are absolutely flat. You can actually go across the worktop, uh, the workpiece, sorry, and actually cut it off completely flush. Yeah. So there's no more. Um, reworking or banging or trying to withdraw after as you can do it and it's yeah. particularly useful um, when you're doing screws, nails, things when you reclaim timber. Okay. Uh, another quick tip to give you as well is a lot of people if, will just push in one place. As you would with a standard saw you'd use the whole length of the blade. It's exactly the same with multi-tools and multi-cutters. This is the, the, the common misconception. You need to use the whole length of it so you need to keep it moving. Oh, okay. Particularly if it's not a plunge cut you need to keep it moving to yeah. use it. And yeah. it's so, so quick for metal. Yeah. yeah. So we've got the questions coming up at the end of the show where you can win your cordless combi drill. And one of those questions might be something to do with a Maybe. Starlock. So we'll just go, we're, go, we're talking Starlock, Starlock Plus and Starlock, and Starlock Max. Max. Yes. Okay, lovely. All right, so thanks very much for showing us that. We're going to be back in a few minutes or a few seconds rather. Uh, so don't go away and we'll have got, what have we got in the, coming up next? What's the, the I'd like to show you a new there? brushless combi, showing us on a brushless technology and a couple of little hidden features in there. So we're going to look at that brushless drill, but we're going to look at it in more detail with this secret thing that you've got yeah. going on. Well, it's no secret because we're just about to announce it. Excellent, All okay. Right. See you in a minute. If you're using power tools, you're probably making dust. Thousands of building workers in the UK suffer from permanent lung damage caused by exposure to dust. Even if you regularly use a mask or respirator, there's still a significant risk from dust creeping in around the edges. If a mask is going to work, it must fit properly. And JSP has created their Force 8 Press to Check respirator, so you can make sure it fits every time you wear it. The mechanism closes the filters, so any leaks around the edge of the mask will be immediately apparent. 
A quick adjustment of the straps to close the gaps will make sure you're safe. You've only got one pair of lungs to last you a lifetime, so give the job of protecting them to a JSP Force 8 Press to Check mask. Visit jsp.co.uk for more information. Hello and welcome back to Skill Builder Live. We're in the third part now, we're on the home run. We're gonna be looking at a brushless 18 volt combi. Yes, have I just given the game away? Yes, but never worry, never worry. Let's get it up and have a look at it. Um, brushless. So that's a drill? That is a drill. That's not a drill. This is a drill. That is a drill. As I, as I told many, many people, <laughs> it's quality not quantity. Well this, I, I couldn't resist just picking this baby up. As I came into Bosch today, I saw this and I thought, what a beauty. This is what, 12 kilos? 12 kilo combination hammer, so hammer and a breaker. Beautiful. One. One Bosch, Bosch are really renowned for their breakers, aren't they, for their hammers? They're We're one of the market leaders when it comes yeah. to hammers, all the way from 27 massive great road breakers, all the way down to your threes and your four kilo for more lighter work. We're not reviewing this, but hopefully at some point in the future we may look at it. But what I did discover, just one interesting point I discovered about hammers, is that it takes a while to warm it up. Yes, it does, yes. Yeah, yeah. there's, a, there's a, a lubricant in there, a grease, right. which, which actually, if you measure the output from it in terms of the, the joules, the hitting power, as you, you run it for longer, it warms up and, and it becomes more effective. Exactly the same as a car. Yeah. Exactly the same yeah. as a car. It's, it, imagine it as a car engine, you need to have it up to a, a working temperature, and that particularly internally. Anyway, so they know about hammers, so this is a big hammer. This is what we call a percussion drill, actually. Quite right, or a combination. Technically, yeah. technically. I'm going to put this down now. I will be your back. So, Roger, let me talk you through, and Peter, a new brushless combi drill for us, okay? Um, we spoke earlier about brushless motors being smaller, longer run time, because they have no brushes. Mm. But actually, something I want to point out here, it's a combination of a few elements. It's the battery technology. It's the fact that a gearbox has been optimized to work with that new brushless motor. Even things down to the chuck, a metal chuck, a single sleeve mm. with the bearing front on the I noticed that you've got a really nice chuck mm. on this because I, I'm, I'm a fan of the, the Jacob's chuck, if you like, like the old, the, the wrong chuck and, and the, and the, the metal, I like yes. the metal, I do like it. So you don't make this chuck, do you? No, we don't. Uh, no, I'm quite open with that. We have a ROM chuck on the front mm. of our product. They're extremely good at chucks. Why not put it onto an extremely good product? So it's optimised, it's a balance between quality components. And I notice you've got a nice rotated bezel on the front so that doesn't mark things when you're getting close to the bit of, a bit of uh, right. furniture or whatever. There's, a, there's another little benefit of the bearing front on the bezel on the front. The fact is that if you're going to start a hole, particularly in, for example, metal where you haven't yeah. counterpunched it already, you can actually hold it. All oh, right. So and if you're drilling into through. tiles or something like yeah. that, rather than it skidding around, yes. you can actually hold it by that. Fair Do you know enough. what? Do you know what? I've been using drills for years. And mm. I never knew that. I've never thought of actually holding the bezel. To, uh, sometimes I hold the drill. <laughs> I shouldn't, but that's why my hands are like my hands are. Yeah. You know, a battleground. But uh, yeah, so that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Holding the bezel. Good idea. Yeah. Just an another little feature on it. So. Let me tell you something else about the product. Not only is it brushless, the metal um, chuck, the gearbox, this thing has another feature on it I'm going to show you, which is called electronic rotation control or kickback. Um, you may have had the situation, I know some of you guys out there would have had it, as you're drilling away and the drill bit snags in the workpiece. And automatically yeah. it takes your wrist round with the tension, particularly if you haven't got a side handle. Yeah, do you know what? I had a big old breaker, but well, it wasn't, it was a big old hammer drill that I mm. used to have, big old wolf thing, oh, right. a big massive monster, and uh, it didn't have a clutch or anything on it. And, and I was up a ladder one day, and this thing snagged as I was cord, cord drilling through, and it whacked round. Not only could I not control it with my no. wrist, it almost took my wrist, you know, broke my wrist, but it also managed to whack me in the side of the face. And honestly, you know, if it was Muhammad Ali or Mike Tyson or whatever, I don't know, but I was dazed. I was up a ladder and thank goodness I didn't drop the drill, I didn't fall off the ladder, but I was a little bit punch drunk for a while. And I took that machine down off the ladder and I chucked it straight in the skip because I thought as time that went, the before wrist. that thing kills me, I've got to get rid of it because I knew I'd be tempted to use it again. And I went out and bought myself 
a drill with a proper chuck, uh, with a proper uh, clutch, clutch yeah. and uh, electronic it was actually, mm. uh, but it was a big difference anyway. But that's my little boring story if you like. Well, you're still here with a tail to tail. So what we actually have inside this drill, Bosch are really good at, as a side point at sensors. Mm. The sensors you have, for example, in your, your smartphone, which tells you which way up the orientation of the screen is. Yes, yeah. The exactly the same type of sensor here is inside the product. Yeah. So whenever this feels some quick movement in any plane, it turns the machine off automatically. So you say any plane. So I can understand it worked like that because it's yeah. like a little pendulum or something inside there. But if you're using it like that? It's, it's a... The actual microchip is two mil by two mil. It's a tiny microchip and it will sense any directional movement because actually you drilling into a ceiling, into a joist, something like that, yeah. that movement still does that. Yeah, is yeah. no different to you drilling. So, so, so how does it work? Because well, it how it works is, is actually the small mi microscopic almost sensor. It's two mil by two mil, tiny little sensor, senses the movement. As soon as it feels a quick movement, and oh, okay. within a nanosecond... Yeah. So it's not a gravity, it's not like, like no, no, I'm talking about a pendulum yeah, hanging like no, that. There's no nothing. bearing, anything like that. So it work upside down? Yeah. Work in Australia? It is very big down under. Well, there you are. Okay. So let's show you actually working. And actually, once it's actually engaged, the light will also flash to let you know you've done something wrong. All right. So let's put it in a second speed. We're drilling away. We've snagged up. Whoa, look at that. And it's coming. There I don't is, know if you can see it there. Strobe. There is flash photography here if you're epileptic. I'm just going to hide that. If you're not epileptic, here we are. <laughs> Quite right. So there we go. Then, uh, and you can see closely here on the overhead, you'll see I'm still holding down the actual trigger. Yeah. I let it off and gauge it. You're back working uh, and you haven't had, as you've experienced, that major mm. movement of kickback. Mm. Um, the good thing is, this is what we would class as our middle of the range combi. We have this on our top of the range combis. We have it on the side, large rotary hammers. Yeah, we have it on some of the products similar to what you brought up earlier. We even have it on grinders. Everything to protect from oh, that really? kickback situation. Well. From that kickback situation. So, uh, so with the grinder, if the the blade caught, yeah, and, and the it, whole thing will kick up. Uh, Particularly, you see often when you drive along the road, people cutting up with diamond blades, slabs, yes, tiles. Yeah. Usually sp spread legged up below. This is just a simple feature in the product which stops that and eliminates that happening. Horrendous, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I, I saw a, a case the other day, because I'm always reading these horror stories on the health and safety on the HSE website, mm -hmm. and this guy using a grinder overhead, which oh, I always no. think is a no-no. No, no. And of course the thing came back straight mm -hmm. down his face. Horrible, horrible thing. So what you're saying is, well, never use a grinder overhead. Come on, don't do that, even if you have got this wonderful yeah, oh, technology. No, not, don't do that. No. And I guess that's the danger, actually, is it sometimes makes people even with, more idiotic. With all features like this, everything about it, common sense prevails. Yeah, yeah. Still obey the rules. Mm. Quite right. Now, let me show you the other feature. This is a precision clutch. Um, I'll tell you what, let's grab an older, let's grab a, a standard one. You want to put the bit in the front yeah, quickly? Okay. We've got a standard one, we've got the brushless one next to it. And we're going to um, try and simulate what actually we're going to try and simulate what happens when you drive in a screw bit and at the end it over ratchets. And yeah, I'll show you exactly I what I mean by that. Yeah. <gasps> what am I doing? Sorry about this. That's it. Excellent. Okay. Just get it in straight. Yeah, yes. that's the way of doing it. Stone rule. Sorry. Right Never used this rule before. Sorry. Here we go. So, what we have in front of you here, I hope you can see it on the overhead. Obviously, brilliant, we've got the Bosch logo there. Yeah, never uh, far away never from a Bosch logo here, exactly are you? Exactly right. You're always 10 paces away from one. We've got a, a, a combi drill here. We set it to non-hammer. We're just going to drive the screw in, or we're just going to drive the screw in. And what will actually happen is you set the torque. You've probably done this many times, mm. plasterboard, things like that. A couple of test shots, get the torque rating yeah. at the front set, and then you can sink the screw in. Right. So we're going to sit yeah, straight sink into one the... Of, sink one of them in. Straight into there, yeah? Yeah. Whoops, okay. let's get it forward, yeah. And That's can, it. Yeah, I know that, that noise. That's the Dawn Woodpecker. <laughs> but that is an over-ratcheting. And what's actually happening there is that it's constantly flicking around all the time. And if you had a very close-up and watch the actual screw, you'll see it's actually fractionally twisting around. Yeah, and it's actually tearing the head out of it a little Quite bit by right. little bit. Because so, if you've got a magnetic bit, after a while of driving screws in, you notice that the bit is yeah, covered in... all the swarf on there has come out. Tiny bit. So this, so we've got this set low, 
And, and what you're saying to yeah. me is that's not doing it any good at all? No, it's not doing the machine any good because you're, you're constantly wearing at the gearbox. You're quite right, it's not doing the combination of the screw or the, the bit any good because it's actually slightly ripping it away. Yeah, I, I, actually it's only just occurred to me that what it's actually doing with every single one of those little clicks is it's testing it and saying no, isn't it? Yes. It's asking the question again. Exactly Has right. it gone far enough? So it's not like it clicks once and then says, exactly. I know I've gone far enough. Mm. If you're daft enough to leave your finger on the trigger, you can see it, can yeah, it, okay, it I understand, the, yeah. The, the other risk you have as well is that, as you quite rightly explained it really well there, that actually it's still testing, shall I go round, shall I go round, and at one point it may snap the head of the screw off. All right. Because it's constantly testing it. I always find the thing about that is that, that it's a bit like using impact drivers. You never know when you put a screw in whether you're just that fraction of a a turn if you like yeah. from snapping the head off right, so in yeah. other words you may have put it in mm. but you've actually damaged that screw in such a way that it's just about to go yeah. so there's another reason why you shouldn't use too powerful an impact driver quite right it'll just snap the head off yeah so let's take you on to the new version here the brushless version we've got it set up in exactly the same way first speed on drill averagely set for the actual um, torque settings but this has a precision clutch in it so give that a go let's see the same result time. yeah same again same job Yep. Put it in forward this time. See, I'm learning. Wow. That's it. That's it. Ah, it, that was interesting, wasn't yeah. it? I took my finger off the trigger, put it back on, and yeah, then it we, did yeah, yeah. ask the question again. But actually, so let's do that again now. Right, just... And that's it. So long as I keep my finger on that's the right. trigger, yeah. it's saying, we've gone far enough, Roger, give that's up. It. Exactly. Brilliant. So, really clever. So that's another one of the sensors. Quite right. So in this product, we've probably got four sensors I can mention. One is the precision clutch. What it actually is, as this asks the question, as you mentioned, have I gone enough? As soon as it hits the first one, there's an optical sensor. A mm. small part of the gearbox moves, cuts the beam, that's the laser line in there, and turns itself off automatically. Yeah. So you've got that. You then have the second sensor we used earlier, which has the kickback, the movement. Have I done something I shouldn't have done? Kicks it over to stop uh, damage to the workpiece or yourself or the machine. We then have another sensor in there that means that if it's actually drawing too much current, the motor thinks something's happening, it'll cut the motor out. And finally, we have a battery sensor in the actual battery itself says, if you're drawing too much current, too much heat out of me, I'll cut, I'll cut off to protect me and also protect you. Right, so, so. Sensors everywhere on this product. Four. There's four sensors four on the sensors product. sensors in that. It seems to me that Bosch makes sensors for all kinds of applications and yes, we do. they're just looking for jobs to do with them. And we are because they're valid, they're not gimmicks. Let's, no. let's be fair, those are, those are legitimate uses of sensors. But exactly right. From the automotive side, now you get into a car, Bosch is one of the leaders in car technology and it's, your car is full of sensors, mm. your phone is full of sensors, the modern world is full of sensors, it should be no difference with power tools. So, Nice lightweight brushless tool. What do you think, Peter? You've seen a few brushless drills in your time, and we did say that Bosch were late coming to the market. They're there eventually. Finally, they got there. Probably the world. You know what? The, 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 the most the thing I noticed first of all when I picked this up, and I tried it a little bit a couple of days ago um, at a, at another show, was actually how ergonomic it is. It's a really really comfortable drill to hold. The handle has been really really well designed. Um, uh, and that's also, and as far as I'm concerned, you know, when it feels like that, it's going to be the one that I reach for. Yeah, the um, thing is that 18 volt drill, which we all know is more or yeah. less the sort of standard that everybody, if you don't own any other drill, you own an 18 volt one. But actually, this is more or less like a 14.4 volt as they were, and 12 volt is getting down. There's no real penalty in using that 18 volt now, is there? No, I don't, and uh, you know, and then when you add in the sensors and uh, you know the other features of it. It's kind of like it's it's an out there kind of up to the minute cutting edge uh, kind of tool. And particularly, you know, I I normally use a smaller kind of drill for kitchen fitting and stuff like that. I mean, that is, you know, a kind of thing that I that I would use for the slightly sort of heavier jobs, not for hinge fitting perhaps, but you know, some of the other sorts of things. And because it is quite compact and it's got a really good chuck, and I. I believe you can take the 
the chuck off as well. Yeah. Good point, actually, Peter. So actually, yeah. the chuck is fully removable as well because. What's that, an Allen key down the, through the middle? Quite or? right. Open yeah. it fully up, Allen key, give it a yeah. knock, and it'll just. I have had drills, front. not to mention any names, where you don't need to do that. A chuck falls off on its own. <laughs> And, and the, the, the way I found that out was actually the torque was so great it tightened the, the auger bit in, jammed, and I tried to undo it and the chuck came off. So that little screw in the middle, if it's not up to, if it's not a really nice bit of metal, mm. it will just shear off. So again, that's one of the things you get when you go and buy a cheap, low brand. That, that, you you always knows. get what you pay for, yeah, as yeah. simple as that. Mm. So this has got no application for hire, so they won't be sending you one of these to test then, Peter? No, no. I, and I, I, you know, I was glad I had the opportunity to, you know, to try it out on a, you know, at a different situation. But, I mean, again, what would be the sort of retail price of that, Martin? A, a product like this with a couple of batteries, a charger and a box, around about £250, somewhere like that, yeah. as a mid-range yeah. product. Yeah, you see, it seems to me that, you know, the hire industry sort of starts kicking in at about 400 450 um, you know, when, when guys can't afford that amount of money, uh, then they'll hire it. Uh, and so you're talking like the, the bigger breakers and, you know, maybe 10 kilo, 12 kilo breakers. They, that's where they'll start hiring rather than actually buying. Yeah. Um, you do get that awful sit. Sorry, Peter, go on. So, yeah, uh, something like that. Well, you know, even if, you, if you're an occasional user, you'll go and buy, you know, a, a, an own brand. You won't get a, a classic, beautiful machine like that, um, but then you probably won't need it because it will probably go back in the kitchen drawer after you've, uh, you know, after you've used it. But uh, you know, that's a real good professional product, and it's, for two hundred and fifty quid, I reckon that's, you know, that's a pretty good deal. Don't quote him on that price, by the way. Two hundred and fifty quid. It might be less. It might be more. We don't want to start a war with people saying you told no, me no. I could get well, that I for two fifty. Well, that's what Martin said. Roughly, yeah. Sorry, he roughly, said it. Yes, You're right. Yeah. Roughly, roughly two hundred and fifty yeah. squid. So there you are. So that's the Bosch brushless drill. This is our prize. This is up for grabs. Those questions are going to be coming up in a minute, but don't go there too soon because they won't be up there. So hang on, and if you're the first one to be pulled out the hat with the correct answers to all three questions. This beautiful tool will be winging its way to you in a case with the batteries and the charger. Yeah? Yes, so, anything else to mention? Um, the only other thing we looked at was some stuff on the board behind us. You spotted a new product. Ah, yeah, yeah. I was looking at this green beam laser. We're not gonna review this now, but it did catch my eye, not literally, I must say, but uh, I don't know, can you switch a laser on in, in the camera? Will it, what will it do, make the camera blow up? There you are, green beam. Absolutely fantastic, because the green beam reaches the parts, I shouldn't say that because I'll get sued by Heineken, but the green beam is more visible, isn't it? Yeah, it's you four times it on... more visible than, the, than red. Yeah. Um, this product has obviously green beam, it's a cross-line laser. It also has plum points on it as well, at the top and underneath. Oh, there, there it is, you can see it. Perfectly. All right, so one, one on the ceiling, yep, so and a, that's a spot on the ceiling. A spot. And, underneath and, and it's going across the yeah, top of the ceiling. There we go down, and if you look at the side, use that for the graph. You can actually adjust it to do single line, mm -hmm. center itself up, yeah. vertical line only, off, which is another great feature to have an off button, but also the crosshair as well. Now, we're not reviewing this at all. We, I, well, I just I kind of just fancied having a look at it, but we're going to do this in more depth. But just let me just say one thing about that. If you've got those lines there, why would you want to switch one off? Um, you would want to switch one off, particularly if you were only trying to get your running down from a plumb point, often with plasterboard jobs, for example, where you're putting it on the floor anyway, but you want to have it level, you're going to cover any movement using a skirting board anyway. Um, and as for the side here, if you were putting up, let's say even a, the most basic of shelf, if there's any sort of frame to it, as in the way of support, you want to make sure the support is level Yeah, yeah. and plumbed up yeah. to the ground. My, my point was, why would you need to switch one off? Why couldn't you just leave them all working? But I think what it is, it's a bit of a trick question this, but I think actually it increases the intensity of the beam if you're not using it through the prism. I don't know whether it, that's true it could or not. Well be, but yeah. the, the good point, as you said earlier on, is take it away, have a play with it. Peter can interject as well and come back and let us know on that one. Yeah. Can you see this, Peter? Do I turn that, Ryan? So what happens if I play that beam in Skype? Ah, no. <laughs> don't play with lasers. 
Yeah. There you go. Anyway, fantastic. I, I love green beam. I'm going to turn that around now so nobody gets blinded. I, I, I use those kind of uh, laser levels frequently. Anything from hanging pictures to hanging plasterboard to sticking up shelves to even leveling legs on a table. And they are just so easy. And, uh, you know, you, you just kind of think, oh, geez, you know, all that business of messing about with the level and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. It's, yeah. But the other thing about the center line, if you leave the center line going, if you're uh, having to measure, you know, if you want to get a measure line and then you want to say 40 centimeters on each side of that line, something like that, it's, it kind of makes it so much easier um, as long as you, you can find your center. And what happens if you knock this? This is a self-leveling laser. It's quite right, it's a self-leveling, so it'll make it, yeah. it'll work itself back out again and level up again. Has it also got a fixed line? Uh, on this one, no, but it has got a, um, a lock. So if you are going to transport it around, because obviously the laser yeah. can rattle around, you can lock it in place. And it also comes on the little stand here. It also can be used as a wall mount as well, particularly if you're doing things like suspended ceilings. Yeah. Have you come up against that problem, Peter, where they, they have a fixed position as well as this sort of self-leveling? So you yeah. can actually lay a beam to do a gradient yeah. or something. And I've got it selected by mistake and I'm marking the whole thing out thinking it's level and then of course I realise I've got the level on the wrong setting and your line's going up. Uh, yeah, never happened. I haven't actually done that. So you're but too I intelligent, have... Peter. That's your problem. I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm at no, the, I'm at the thick end that. of the building spectrum and you, you're at the intellectual end. <laughs> <laughs> That's why no. you're in your tax haven, mate. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I don't say anything. Uh, you know, Her Majesty might be listening. <laughs> so sorry, go on, you're saying about... What you... No, I mean, it's a very useful function, being able to, you know, to put an angle, like, you know, want to put up a staircase or, uh, you know, something like that, and you can just mark your line at an angle and that sort of stuff. But the, the, the device I was using was a lot simpler, and therefore, uh, you know, it basically had a, 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 a single, a, a two choice. So you either had it fixed or you had it, um, you know, uh, floating. Mm -hmm. You're doing a bit so, of scratching and a bit of itching there, Peter. Is it the mosquitoes getting you down there in your yeah, tank no, haven? It's, it's it's dust. Is it? Just <laughs> plain old dust. I thought it was going to be some yeah. exotic mosquito buzzing around getting you. Yeah. See, I was just trying to find the downside to paradise, my friend. Yeah, yeah there's Lake Victoria is swarming with them. Is it? Yeah, I see, we finally tracked him down. Taxman, that's where he is this week. Anyway, Peter, thanks very much for coming on and adding some illumination some insight into our presentation and hopefully we'll see you again soon your magazine the one you're writing for at the moment tall business and hire thanks very much guys you won't get it you won't get it on the newsstands don't try but it is on the internet so look it up it's on the internet right yeah and look at peter's handiwork on the internet that's fantastic all right see you again peter i bump into you on some lonely beach somewhere yeah yeah good thanks man. roger thank thanks, you Martin. all the best thank you. See you. See you. Okay, so that's Peter gone back to his sun lounger, and that's us finished, it concluded. Is. Thank you very much. Thanks indeed. for coming along. I enjoyed it, yeah. So I'm going to take this away to test it. Have and also, it also the brushless drill, I think we're going to test that, aren't we? Yes, you are. Yes. Absolutely. So we've got lots more coming up on Skill Builder. Come back and see us soon, and we'll have more live views for you to see more tool tests coming up. I hope you found that useful and interesting. I'm Roger Bisbee. Don't forget to subscribe and you can go to our competition on the website. There's details coming up right now.